I'll make a sound that's so alone that no one can miss it, that whoever hears it will weep in their souls, and hearths will seem warmer, and being inside will seem better to all who hear it in the distant towns. Konnichiwa, minasan. It's Gray from Akazashi's Tea House Home in Japan. How are you doing? You good? You genki? Okay, I have something different again today. I have a book review for you. Well, it's actually a short story review. It is The Foghorn by Ray Bradbury. Now, this is taken from the collection The Golden Apples of the Sun. Look at this cover. How cool is that? That's a classic cover. Not sure how old it is, but look at it. Beautiful. Anyway, Ray Bradbury's The Foghorn was first published in 1951 in the Saturday Evening Post. I came across it in the 1953 story collection The Golden Apples of the Sun, which is a huge recommendation if you haven't read it. Now, the Foghorn, to keep it simple, is a tale of two men who work at a secluded lighthouse and what they witness there on a cold November night. It contains themes of loneliness, isolation, companionship, the power of nature, as well as how little we know about the vast depths of the ocean. I want to keep this uh, brief review spoiler-free, so I'll just say that Bradbury's descriptions of the sea and the sound of the foghorn are simply stunning. I want to give you some quotes to whet your appetite, and I'm going to read the beginning few paragraphs of the story later on. So listen to these quotes. The ocean, it rolls and swells a thousand shapes and colours, no two alike. The foghorn was blowing steadily, once every 15 seconds. Sounds like an animal, don't it? McDonne nodded to himself. A big lonely animal crying in the night, sitting here on the edge of 10 billion years, calling out to the deeps, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'll make a voice like all of time and all of the fog that ever was. A sound like November wind and the sea on the hard, cold shore. And one more. A cry came across a million years of water and mist. A cry so anguished and alone that it shuddered in my head and my body. This is a big recommend to all those seeking a story perfect to read on a cold and windy autumn or winter night. For added effect, you could play a video of the sounds of the sea in the background or leave it to your imagination. Okay, that's it for my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Please drop me a comment. Let me know what you think of the story. Have you read it? Are you a fan of Ray Bradbury's? It's amazing to think how old it is now, but I think these stories still hold up. And I actually have a short review of this on my WordPress blog. I'll leave the link in the description below. But it gets um, it gets a lot of views. Well, you know, for me, it gets a lot. But it's it's one of the like most visited sites or most visited pages on my blog. And it's a very short review as well. I reckon a lot of people may be disappointed. I think they're probably looking for you know a deep like deep dive summary. But it's not. It's uh, as I say, I've just told you pretty much what I wrote. So yeah. Big recommend Ray Bradbury. His um, short story collections, I think, is where he really, you know, shines the brightest. Really good. The October Country is another one. Another really good one. So, before I finish, please let me read the opening of the story to you. Okay, here we go. Out there in the cold water, far from land, we waited every night for the coming of the fog, and it came, and we oiled the brass machinery and lit the fog light up in the stone tower. Feeling like two birds in the grey sky, McDonough and I sent the light touching out, red, then white, then red again, to eye the lonely ships. If they did not see our light, then there was always our voice, the great deep cry of our foghorn. It shuddered through the rags of mist to startle the gulls away like decks of scattered cards and make the waves turn high and foam. It's a lonely life, but you're used to it now, aren't you? asked McDonough. Yes, I said. You're a good talker, thank the Lord. Well, it's your turn on land tomorrow, he said, smiling, to dance with the ladies. What do you think, McDonough, when I leave you out here alone? On the mysteries of the sea. McDonough lit his pipe. It was a quarter past seven on a cold November evening, the heat on, the light switching its tail in two hundred directions, the foghorn bumbling in the high throat of the tower. There wasn't a town for a hundred miles down the coast, just a road which came lonely through dead country to the sea with few cars on it. 
Two miles of cold water separated our rock, and rare few ships passed. The mysteries of the sea, said MacDunn thoughtfully. OK, so this is Grey from Akazashi's Tea House, signing off for the night here. Um, hope to see you in a future video. Matane! Thank you.